Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Friday, and again, it's not a build day, but it is a day here in my backyard in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, today is going to be the first of, it's going to be multi-episodes uh, for trying to get that koi pond project started. And, uh, mm, I, I, th I think what we are going to start with today is we need to get that life support system started in the backyard and we have to set up a housing some type of a shelter we have to pour a slab then we have to do some connection of some plumbing we have to hook up some electrical so this is not going to be just one episode uh, this is going to be a multi-episode project so sit back relax and hopefully enjoy what's going to be several episodes trying to get this koi pond project underway so without further delay let's get today's video underway Well, anyway, today is our first day using the new microphone, uh, the new Rode uh, video micro microphone. So, and it's a little bit breezy this morning. So, if you're not hearing any of the uh, the sound of that massive problem that you have with the GoPro, and you don't hear all the wind noise and everything like that, it means our solution is actually effective. So, we're going to go into the garage this morning, and inside the garage, what we are going to do is we're gonna pull apart a box that's been sitting in there well over one year. And the box has been sitting in here with a, a storage unit. I picked up this, and they call this shed here, um, the uh, stowaway horizontal shed uh, by Suncast here. Before I left, what I did was I measured, I measured the size of the slab that we are going to need to do our life support system for the, uh, for the pond, which consists of multi-filters, a pump system, uh, electrical for the, the LED lighting that we're going to be using, all the components that we need to make this koi project successful. And I believe, and we're gonna find out here soon enough, uh, if this housing right here is gonna be big enough to house those units. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the components, uh, the parts out of the box, and we're gonna size it up. Uh, remember, we have to do a slab, so we have to come up with some kind of a solution. I don't know if the slab is gonna be poured inside the container or if we're gonna pull the, uh, the parts out of the box measure it and then pour a slab and set the shed on top of it, we will find out. It's gonna be a play as you go today. Well, normally, normally it's a guy thing. Normally we just wanna grab some stuff and start putting some stuff together. When we receive something, we hate reading the instruction manual, but I will tell you, it's probably a good thing to read the instruction manual because there's a lot of good tips. I will tell you, I've put so many things together and gotten down to the last portion of an install and found out that I put a panel in backwards where I used the wrong bolts in an earlier step and I had to go and disassemble things. So I've gotten into the practice these days of reading instructions and reading manuals uh, prior to uh, uh, doing an install. And I know that even though it's a male instinct to try to just dive into these things because we think ourselves a lot of times that we know everything. Well, sometimes we don't know everything, and, and I'm proud enough to uh, admit that. So, uh, I, and it was a good thing that I did read some of the instructions. Uh, now, and this is going to help me make a decision about the foundation for the, for the storage shed. Uh, and there's several things that I'm going to have to do uh, based on, because the storage shed, this is not a storage shed, remember, it is a shelter is what we're using it for. We're adapting, we're making something uh, that will be protective, it will be a long-term investment of our life support system for protection against the weather environments, against critters, what we call here in the south, uh, raccoons and all these kind of things that can go inside and actually do some destruction. We have squirrels, I don't know, I haven't showed you that. But we have tons of squirrels. I don't think we have squirrels in the Philippines. I have never seen a squirrel in the Philippines. 
but we have hundreds and hundreds of squirrels around the area and squirrels can act they act like rodents they're actually sort of like a rat with a long tail um, but they, uh, they they can be very destructive they can bite cables uh, uh, and they they can cause holes and pipes and things like that so anyway what we're going to do I just looked at the manual and it talks about uh, preparing a site foundation and a platform and what we're going to do, you can either do a wood platform or you can do a concrete platform. Nice thing about this, this shows you the size. I don't even have to guess. This shows the exact size that we'll need. And what we're going to do uh, today, we're going to start preparation. And this is going to be, um, again, multi-episodes. So what we're going to have to do is we have to bury some of the pipes and some of this foundation. And we have to adapt the base, which is mm, this section right here. This is the base. This is a, a, a door. This is a door on the front. These are our panels for the side. And this is our roof right here. So what we're going to do, uh, and it's, uh, again, uh, today uh, we, we have to start site preparation for a slab. Uh, so it tells me it recommends a four inch thick, about a four inch thick slab. We'll, get, we'll pick up some rebar today. We'll pick up, I already have some concrete mix. I don't think it's enough though. I have some concrete mix here. And uh, I have to decide based upon the thickness and upon the width whether we have enough concrete. Again, I don't think we do. So we'll probably pick up those things from Lowe's today. And today we'll be mainly focused on doing the formwork, maybe pouring the slab, and then we will start working on the assembly at a later date of this right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that underway. All right, FedEx guy is here. How are you? All right, what you got for me? Um, I'm not sure. You're not sure. Uh, no. Is it for me? American that's, Nearest. That's me. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, great. Do I have to I'll sign anything? It. Nope. You're good to go. All right. Great. Thank you. you have a good one. You too. Thank you. Anyway, we ordered several things uh, from um, Amazon.com, and it's for I don't know. I don't know what this is. Let's go ahead and open this box up here. We'll open it up inside the garage, and see what we actually received from FedEx today. Well, this is awesome. Remember, we were going to do, uh, today was supposed to be uh, doing the foundation for uh, the, the, the shed for the life support system for the koi pond. But we have a, a higher priority on top of that. Maybe we could do a little bit of both today. What we just received here, what this is, this is the pump for this pressure washer right here. That pressure washer is the one that the pump went bad on it. So today is going to be shifted. We're going to be dynamic. Uh, we are going to adjust like we always do. And what we're going to do today, we are going to do a DIY on uh, installing a pump on a pressure washer. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that should be a quick thing and then we will return to the original plan for today, which was to go ahead and start doing the formwork and uh, setting up a foundation for our life support system uh, housing area. Well, let me give you some background information. I started doing some of the pressure washing around the house here. Of course, in the uh, anywhere around the world, uh, especially in a very wet environment, uh, such as Charleston and in the Philippines, they have pressure washers as well. But here, uh, our concrete gets very dirty. And what we do is, is you'll see, this is what it normally looks like when it's very dirty. Uh, you see all the, the buildup, all, all the mold and mildew and everything like that. Well, I started, I started working on uh, the pressure washing a few days ago, just a few days ago. And you can see, I did the pressure washing over here. You see how nice and clean all this is? I started pressure washing some of the vinyl, uh, the fence, uh, the, the concrete. And then I got to about this point right here. <clears throat> and then what, what happened was when I got to that, the pump failed on my pressure washer. And this is my pressure washer right here. You see this, this is my unit right here. And this is a Troy built. And it has a Honda uh, GCV 190 engine on here. 
I really like Honda engines. Uh, and uh, The normal engines that you get in the U.S. are usually Briggs & Stratton and Hondas. <clears throat> I've had Briggs & Strattons over the years and I've had Hondas. Uh, Briggs & Stratton always seems like I've had to do some kind of maintenance, some type of maintenance, and they don't seem to last very long. But on the Honda engines that I've had, they, they, I've never had a Honda engine fail on me. So I'm going to give a thumbs up of approval for, for my Honda engines. Well, this isn't a video today on endorsement or non-endorsement of any specific type of engines. What we are here today to do is we are going to do a pump replacement. What happened was uh, when I was doing uh, the pressure washing out here, uh, all of a sudden I heard a pow, a, uh, uh, it was a loud noise, and then I lost all my pressure on my pump. And normally the troubleshooting procedures, the check your nozzles, these have, uh, these, these have these little nozzles. You see these things right here. So normally pressure washers, they come with different types of heads. Uh, the one, there's a head right here, which is connected to the end of the wand right now. And these units, sometimes uh, the, little, the little nozzles on the end, sometimes they get clogged up. That could be the simplest reason for you having no pressure. Uh, so basically you pop this off, you look at the end, and if you can see through the hole at the very end uh, and it's not clogged up, then that's not the, not, not the problem. And there's other steps you can do for troubleshooting. Um, maybe your, your hose is clogged up, which wasn't the case. I checked that. That was good. And uh, uh, so th it all points lead indicated that my pump had failed. Now, there's two things you can do. Actually, there's three things that you can do. <clears throat> well, anyway, this is this is our pump. This is the new pump that just came inside the uh, the mail. And this connection right here, this connects up to your your engine. And there'll be a shaft that goes through. There'll be a square key that goes here uh, that uh, so it doesn't slip. And then what you have is you have this portion right here, which is actually the the. Uh, the main part of the pump that has to do with your pressure, how much pressure you get, when it kicks in, when it doesn't, and a little siphon valve right here for your fluid, for your cleaning fluid. Uh, this is your uh, from your hose, uh, from your water supply, which would be your normal garden hose, and this is the output right here that goes to your wand uh, that you're going to do your spraying with. Uh, so anyway, uh, the two options that I was going to talk about earlier is you can replace all the parts inside here. You can take this section apart right here, and inside the base of this right here, there are some little valves inside here. They're pressure-sensitive uh, valves, and they will know when you squeeze the, the wand that it puts a demand on your pump, and it will cause your engine to rev up, and then you will uh, be doing high pressure washing. And there's other types of sensors inside here as well. And this right over here, this is, an, a, this is a fail safe device, uh, so that uh, if you get too much pressure built up, the thing doesn't explode on you. It has something to do with high temperature or something like that. Uh, so you have to have on this. Sometimes you will receive this unit right here without this. So what you do is you pull it off of your old unit and then you replace it back on this one. But this is great. This came with everything. Uh, so what we're going to do on this one right here, we're gonna do a full install. Uh, and and that is option number three, is ordering the pump like I ordered the whole pump assembly right here. And I'm going to just uh, do a one-for-one -one swap out. And that's what we're going to do today. And it shouldn't take us that long to do this project right here. Remember, the first option, uh, go to your maintenance guy. He'll order this or he'll rebuild it. Then he will charge you for the maintenance. Uh, the second option is to rebuild it yourself. To rebuild this entire pump, it's probably around, I'm going to say, between 20 and 30 U.S. dollars to be able to rebuild this pump. Uh, the, or replace the pump itself, and the price of this pump is about $120. Uh, but you know uh, when you replace this, everything should be working on here. And it's possible that if you buy some of the parts and you break some of the parts trying to install it or some of the interior housing has too much corrosion, uh, that uh, you might have bought some parts and you might not have a successful rebuild. Uh, so I chose the lesser of two evils uh, to go ahead and spend just a little bit more and uh, save the money on the install that a maintenance person that would normally do. And I'll show you how easy it is to replace the pump. First off, there are three bolts that connect the pump unit to the uh, chassis and to the motor. Now, this is for a vertical mounted 
pump system right here. There are many different pumps out there. This is for one of the typical ones, uh, and this is the one that we have, and this is the unit that we're going to be talking about. Anyway, this actually is from a Troy build. I don't know if you see this. This is a Troy build, uh, 3,000 uh, maximum PSI, 2.7 maximum GPM. This pump actually is not a 3,000 PSI pump. This is a I believe it's a 2,800, 2,800 PSI, uh, but they always, when they do the rating on it, the rating is always above for safety factors. And I believe this is also a 2.5 normal maximum gallons per minute uh, pump mechanism on here. So 2.5, uh, the unit says 2.7 maximum. Again, we're gonna get back to sh swapping out the pump. Now, I told you we have three, so we're gonna remove three bolts, and there's this bolt right here, this bolt right here, and there's one more bolt on this side right here. And the way you do that, you put a wrench on the top. For this one right here, we need an Allen uh, wrench for the bottom, and we'll remove that. Now, what'll happen is, when we pull off this pump assembly down here uh, from the motor, what's gonna happen is, it's, the whole motor is, is attached to the pump assembly through here. The whole motor is going to come off. And one of the first things we're gonna do, we're gonna remove uh, this little siphon right here. And this is the siphon that goes from this uh, tank back here that stores the, uh, the cleaning fluid inside. And that's what connects to this item right here. Uh, and that's what you do, that's a pre-spray. You put some of the, your cleaner down on your siding on your house or your driveway, and then you do the high pressure afterwards. So let's go ahead and take the uh, motor uh, assembly away from the pump assembly. Well, let's talk today about what your options are when your pump fails on your pressure washer. You have basically three, uh, three options, maybe more, but we're gonna talk about the three most common options. One is the simplest, but it's the most expensive, and it's to take your unit, take your entire pressure washer over to your local maintenance guy and let him fix it for you. And what he's going to do are one of the other two options that you can do yourself, and you can save some money because it's very simple. You don't need to spend all the money on maintenance uh, for somebody else to do something that you can do yourself. Now for this unit, for this Troy built unit, we have, this is a, this is a vertical pump assembly right here. There are different type of pump, pump assemblies. So make sure if you're ordering parts or if you're ordering the entire pump assembly, you have the correct one based upon the model of your pressure washer. Uh, so I looked up the model of this pressure washer and I found out that this is the unit that I need right here for my pump assembly. Now, those other two options that we were gonna talk about. The other two options are, you can rebuild the pump yourself. If you, you pull the old pump assembly off, you buy a kit, you buy a pump repair kit. And what the pump repair kit's gonna do, it's gonna come with, on the inside of here, there's going to be three valve assemblies inside there. Uh, and, the, the, and that's normally what fails. They're, they're pressure uh, sensitive, and they know when you put a demand on your pressure washer, when you squeeze the little handle, and you start doing some high pressure washing, that will pop that into uh, a condition to activate the, the motor and make the, uh, the motor uh, put a demand uh, on, on, onto the motor itself, and it will make high pressure. It will rev up the engine. Uh, and then when it's not running and it's, it's like a like a clutch assembly inside there It will make the motor stay at a lower rpm uh, So you can order these kits and you can do all the replacement unfortunately sometimes what will happen when you do this You will break either the pump assembly itself or some when you're trying to install it uh, there might be so much corrosion or something on the inside you might have an unsuccessful uh, repair of the pump assembly I uh, the other option that you would have is to just swap out the entire pump. Uh, you're still saving the money from the repair and the, the entire pump replacement is pulling off three bolts and replacing three bolts back on and hooking it back up to the motor. Let's talk about those last two options where you're doing the maintenance yourself. If you do a, a uh, repair kit yourself, it's probably gonna cost around 30 US dollars for the repair kit. If you buy this entire complete uh, assembly the entire pump here 
uh, the entire pump's going to cost you around 120 US dollars. Uh, so you, you pay about $90 more, but you have the satisfaction pretty much knowing when you replace it and you have all brand new parts, you have no corrosion or anything like that, th this pump is going to last you several years. Uh, if you put the other parts inside there and it's not calibrated properly or you damage some of the internal components of your old pump assembly, uh, you might have spent $30 and you might have wasted that. So for me, I believe it was more effective to go ahead and buy a pump assembly and that's what we're going to do today. We are going to swap out the pump assembly. Well here are your two main tools that you're going to need to accomplish this procedure. You'll need a wrench. You'll need a wrench to hold on to the nut on the top while you have a Allen, uh, uh, Allen wrench right here to be able to loosen up the bolt on the bottom. Now some of these pumps have a bolt on the bottom and not an Allen, so you, it depends on your unit that you're doing. Uh, the, the type of a maintenance that we're doing here is applicable to many different models, uh, but we're specifically targeting the Troy built, uh, the XP series right here. Uh, this unit right here. Anyway, let's go ahead and start taking the uh, the pump assembly off of the motor housing. Anyway, and so we're going to remove this right here. It's going to leak just a little bit, but we're going to try to get this to go back inside the reservoir. All right, we're just going to let this sit over here on the side. Now that we've pulled this off right here, let's go ahead and disassemble. So underneath here is a Allen. We're going to take this and we're going to take the uh, the wrench on the top and uh, just make sure that it doesn't slip. So with our Allen uh, wrench on the bottom and our regular wrench on the top, we are just going to loosen up this bolt inside of here. And now that it's loose, we can do is we can remove either from the bottom or from the top you'll see and we're going to do this for all three of the mounting bolts here and here the came off down here and we'll pull the nut off of the top and we'll just keep all these together we'll do these for all three now once you've removed three of the bolts the uh, the only thing that's holding the pump to the the motor itself is its own friction uh, sometimes they might be stuck a little bit you might have to tap them a little bit you might have to shape, shake them left and right but this one's going to be easy it's, it seems to be uh, loose to begin with so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and remove it we're going to drop it down and that is it the pump is now separated from the uh, from the engine assembly uh, so just go ahead and remove it put it out of the place Move it over here. Now, I will tell you right now, the the motor itself, if we were to move this around, we could take this entire motor and we could set it aside. Something you want to be careful about is when you remove the pump assembly, there's going to be a square key inside there. And here it is. This is the square key right here. Don't lose your square key. Uh, it will be easy to fall out and you'll misplace it. Uh, this is the square key that goes in between here and there'll be a square key. I don't know if we can see it up inside there, uh, but on the shaft for the motor up here, on the it's on the opposite side over there. Uh, this is what we are going to use to make sure that the the, uh, the shaft or the motor and the pump stay connected. For without this, this will just spin, and there'll be nothing that connects it to the uh, to the motor assembly. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to do the opposite. We just pulled this old pump assembly off and we're going to put the new pump assembly back on basically by securing it with these three bolts right here we'll take this overflow this pressure overflow uh, cap and we'll replace it with this one on here and then we'll do a test we'll see if this fixed the problem now let's reattach the uh, siphon hose from the reservoir the uh, to the connection over here so that we can get our detergent when we are doing our cleaning that's done and the next thing we'll do is I just removed a little overflow for the safety valve and we'll go ahead and we'll put it on this right here done 
the pump is replaced we got to go check it out to see if it actually fixed the problem uh, fingers crossed on that before we do that though I have a couple of things I have to bring up and one is several people are asking about Mary Ann's pups what are they looking like right now so anyway uh, our, our uh, ironworks uh, person uh, Grace she went ahead and she took a picture just a few days ago of Mary Ann's pups uh, so anyway here is a picture of the pups uh, the way they look just a few days ago also, uh, I need to mention that, that we have a shout out for today. I just received a shout out from uh, Toby Tannison. And Toby said it is, is his son's second birthday and his son's name is Eric. And he just wanted to make sure that Eric knows both from his mom and dad, dad Toby and his mom. Uh, her name is Honey Lou. Anyway, uh, from Honey Lou and uh, from dad Toby, we all want to wish you, Eric, a very happy birthday. Well, alrighty now, it is time to go ahead and test and see if this worked. Alright, our pressure washer is now working again and is functional. But we are not going to complete the pressure washing of the driveway quite today because I have another surprise for you. I have another attachment that attaches to the wand of the pressure washer. It's made specifically for pressure washing driveways and it makes it a much easier task with a lot less mess uh, we're waiting for that to come in I have another shipment that's coming today that was FedEx I have a UPS shipment that's coming today I don't know if that's what's on that UPS shipment and when that item comes in we will do a product review on that to see if it's worth the money and if it actually works well cleaning your driveway uh, so the next thing is lunch it's lunch time here then after lunch we will readdress I will go back and I will start looking at uh, what we need to do for that life support system for the uh, the slab back there before we start assembling uh, that uh, protective shed cover anyway uh, time to grab something to eat One more thing I wanted to show you before we close out today's DIY episode on how to remove and replace a faulty uh, water pump on your, what is it, the, the Troy built XP uh, pressure washer or any, pretty much any uh, pressure washers uh, that have this type of a pump system is uh, what to look at. To see what caused that failure? Uh, remember I was talking about the little valve. Sometimes the valves fail. Sometimes the internal mechanism, uh, the internal, uh, seals and everything like that leak all these units are sealed units you do not have to add oil to these units uh, but check for your applicable pump uh, to make sure that that is true but for these type of pumps you do not have to add oil uh, what happens is sometimes the seals fit, fail uh, maybe from overheating maybe from overuse and the way you'll see that is when you open it up you will see leaking oil all over the place this was dripping all on my uh, the bottom of our shed that we're going to be installing later on but we have oil all over the place which is an, an indicator a key indicator of why I think the pump might have failed or it might have been a combination so those are things to look at uh, but just a lot of questions come on I look at when people are doing research and they're saying do I need to add oil to my pump when I receive it and this type of pump no it is a sealed unit well today's episode was starting out one direction and then we took another fork in the road and such as things like that that might happen inside your life you never know what's going to be thrown your way 
And uh, a lot of times uh, when you think you're going one way and you take the other fork, a lot of time the road less traveled, so to say, or that other fork in the road might bring some really good things into your life. And these are unexpected. Some people might call it fate. Uh, some people might just say it was a coincidence. But today, anyway, we received the part for our pump. The pump needed to be fixed. I was hoping it would come in. It wasn't projected to come in until I think the 17th or the 18th. Uh, so it was a pleasant surprise, which means I can start doing the things I have been wanting to do. Remember, we have multiple tasks here at our house here in Charleston that need to be done, and we're trying to share this as a DIY for those of you who have not done these kind of tasks before or people who are just interested in these kind of tasks. Remember, the koi pond, the, the, we have to get the koi pond up and running. That's the major uh, DIY task that I am assigned to over the summer. Uh, uh, getting the house cleaned up pressure washing the outside, pressure washing the driveway, the patio, all the things uh, that have been neglected over the last year, year and a half. Uh, but also, I, I know that you know on this site, uh, we tell it like it is. If we are treated fairly and uh, honestly uh, from a, uh, a consumer product uh, standpoint, we purchase something and we have good customer service, we have good results from the product, we tell uh, uh, about the product. We do reviews here. If we have a re, uh, product uh, that is not good, if the uh, customer service was poor and things like that, we talk about that too. And the purpose of this whole review experience is to let you see what our experience is right here and to make, it makes you a better consumer as far as purchasing and using the products similar to the ones that I've chosen on uh, for the home items and for, for building and for consumer electronics and things like that. And case in point today, and it's not the good outcome that we have with the pressure washer here today, uh, but it's another product that I use on a regular basis. And I use this product called Zoom. I don't know if you noticed in yesterday's episode that, that I uploaded, uh, the, uh, the song, the, the little guitar boogie jingle at the very beginning, it was, uh, it was my own. I, I put that together just before we uploaded. So I have something a little bit different. I like to do a change up every now and then. And you might wonder how I recorded that song. How did I do the, mu the multi uh, layers of the different guitars and all on there? Well, I did it with this product here. It's the Zoom. It's the Zoom H6. And, and this is a great product. I think it originally was set up for doing things like uh, um, podcast and live interviews. It has a microphone adapter that goes on the end. Let me see if I can show you these things. Uh, these little connectors, they go on the end. It has some microphones. Uh, here's another microphone. It has multi different types of microphones that you have inside here. I don't really use these so much, but what I use it for is I use it for a multi-track recorder for my guitar and vocals. And if I have an idea, a song, and it's in my mind and I need to get it down fast, I use the little zoom right here and it works great like that. Well, anyway, uh, the, the, this is not about me. This is about the product. The product is a very good and easy to use product and we will do a, a full review on it one day and I will show you how to actually use this right here in one of the uh, uh, DIY episodes. But uh, this, I don't have many hours on this and uh, I had I had the, the item actually broke. Uh, the item itself didn't break, break but the, the plastic cover on the back uh, the battery cover here. This piece right here snapped off and that's the that's the area uh, that actually would snap it in at this point right here. And what I want to tell you about is my uh, my experience with the Zoom customer service folks is they have a you go to their website I sent an email uh, to them uh, based upon uh, one of their uh, uh, contact us and and I sent to them I said hey the uh, the cover broke off on the back of this. Is there a way that I can purchase a new cover? And I gave them the serial number of the unit, and uh, they didn't even ask me for payment or anything like that. Uh, so they said they are going to send out the unit, and uh, they, they said they sent it out, and I received a tracking, and we just received our mail. So let's go see in the mail uh, if the unit uh, cover is in the mail. Stand by. Well, it looks like we received our uh, replacement cover. So let's go and stick it on the unit to see if it works. Well, 
Well, that's just perfect. And I got to tell you, this was so fast. And I will, I will give, I'm going to give two thumbs up uh, of my approval for both the product and the customer service from the Zoom support team, uh, wherever they come from. Anyway, uh, a great product. We will do a review later. And thank you very much to the folks at Zoom uh, for their rush getting this into the mail to me quite fast and uh, ready to get this thing back into operation again. Well, that's about it for today. Uh, we will continue the Koi Pond project maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. Is there something? Do we have yes. something to schedule? I know we got some grocery shopping scheduled. Yeah, yeah. But maybe I will start. What I, I need to get that slab in place and allow it to cure, and then we'll put that shed assembly together on top of that. We have to cut some holes in the bottom of the shed. And I will talk about all of that when we get back to the Koi Pond project. But I think this is enough for today's video. Uh, and today's video ended up ended up being a <laughs> DIY for how to replace a pump on a pressure washer. Although it started out today uh, going to be a how to do life support system, build a shed for your life support system for a koi pond. Again, uh, you have to kind of go with the flow, which direction things send you. Uh, anyway, look, we, we look forward to doing that uh, koi pond project later. Uh, so we're gonna close for today. I have one more birthday shout out and I, we're actually doing this in uh, a post editing here because we were getting ready to close out today's episode and I was checking my email today and I saw that we have another shout out that we need to get in for today so that we are in time for today, Friday the 13th. And it is Michael McCollum's girlfriend of six years. And her name is Christine Sheoken and she is turning 52 today. And I'm gonna let Ness say where she's from because she'll pronounce it a lot better than I will. <laughs> She's from Bacolod Negros Occidental in the Visayas. And she also ha still has family there and she has family in Manila. Well, anyway, uh, both Michael and Christine, uh, I believe they're both living in the U.S. according to the way the email flowed. And she said, uh, and, and Michael said that they are thinking about selling their property uh, mm -hmm. in the U.S. and then moving back over to the uh, Philippines uh, like so many of our subscribers seem to be doing these days. So anyway, uh, for an additional shout out for today, we want to make sure we get a great birthday shout out to you, uh, Christine. So anyway, happy birthday. Happy birthday. If you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, please share and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart. Where is it? in the bottom right hand side of your screen yeah. right over there <laughs> and you'll be notified uh, the next time we upload a new video. So until that time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.